Welcome to our Katia V5 tutorial series. In this video, we'll explore assembly constraints, an essential tool for creating precise and functional assemblies in Katia V5. Whether you're new to assembly design or looking to enhance your skills, this comprehensive guide will help you master assembly constraints. Let's get started. First, we will need an assembly loaded so we can access the assembly design tools. We shall load the bench vice assembly that was used in the assembly tutorial. Once the vice is loaded, we can see that the assembly is positioned correctly. But looking at the tree that there are no constraints saved, that means that all the component parts are free to move. This could be a problem when we add the constraints as Katia will not know which part to move and will always move the part you wanted to remain in place. To stop this, we have to lock one of the parts in place. We do this by using the fix icon. There are a number ways to achieve this. Making sure that the top assembly node is active. We can right click on the part we wish to fix, in this case, the base. Navigate down to base object and select fix. The specification tree will show a constraint node at the bottom and a small green anchor will be shown in the editor window. The second way is to select the part you wish to fix and then select fix from the menu bar. With the base fixed in place, we can now use the constraints to locate the other components. There are a number of different commands that we can use depending on the type of constraint we need. Coincidence is used when positioning a shaft within a hole. Contact is used when two faces are to be in contact with each other. Offset is used when two faces have a dimension between them. An angle is used when a specific angle is required between faces. In this example, we are going to move the slider model out of the way using the compass so we can access the side and top faces of both slider and base models. We pick the compass using the red dot and place it on the slider. We can now move the slider along the Y axis. To replace the compass, pick the red dot and place it on the axis in the lower right hand corner of the editor screen. We can now select the offset constraint icon. This opens a dialog screen we can press OK. Then we select the outer face of the slider model and the inner face of the base as shown. A dialog box will be displayed and we can add our required dimension. The models will not move until the update button is pressed, then the models will be moved. We can now repeat the offset function for the top of the slider. After the upper surface constraint is created, we can hit the update button to move the components to the correct location. The constraints can now be seen on the specification tree and in the editor window. The next parts we need to constrain will be the screw and the handle. For these components, we will be using the coincidence constraint. As with the slider, we can move the components out of the way so we can select the faces needed. select the coincidence icon and the dialog window is seen, click close, then select the center of the screw model, the center line will be displayed and then pick the hole in the slider. The constraint will be created. Note that there is no dimension dialog box displayed here, as this constraint creates concentricity between the two center lines. We can use the same constraint for the handle.
If we update the model at this point, the screw will not move to the required location, as it is already located on the center line of the hole. We need to give it an offset dimension from the front face of the base. We can now update the model and all the components will move to the correct location. The constraints are shown in the tree in the editor window. How do we edit or remove these constraints? That is the next video, so tune in to find out.